Hi there. What's up? I'm Ola, an inhabitant of Lightbulb Moment, aka digital entrepreneur, a proud aunt, and a goofy nerd. I'm Chris, a designer, a creative tech enthusiast, and a semi-grown kid. This is the Ranting Bananas podcast. It sound right, boy. This is a letter to my future son. I hope you know that you the one. So, welcome back to episode three of our mini series, The Big Questions.、Um, Uh, we've had a lot of information <laughs> in the last couple of episodes, so I think, I think, what we want to do now,、uh, and Chris jump in here, I think, is just to kind of process through what happened,、uh, point A, and how it went to point B, and how it went to point C. Like, what was our thinking? Throughout all of this, because we had a lot of back and forth, you and I,、um, when you found out, right? Let's talk about our first conversation. How did it happen? Remind me, because of course, so much emotion from my side. So sometimes I need a bit of a jogging of memory. So I think I think when 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 I first found out、um, was we were texting about. Whatever. Oh no! I was just randomly calling you because I was walking to Sainsbury's.、Uh, shout out to Sainsbury's. <laughs>、um, I was just walking to go grocery shopping, and I I had given you a call, and then you were like, "So something happened."、Uh, and then and then you you told me about all of it, and I think I think there was a lot of mixed emotions for you because I think. You were both terrified, angry, but questioning what is the right thing to do. Yeah, yeah. I think when I first stood, like on my initial conversations of finding out, my you know, of course, my initial reaction is finding out that someone's pregnant and a girl you barely know, someone you've spent fuck all time with. You're just like, holy shit. How did this happen? Okay, I remember how it happened, but like, what the fuck do I do, right? Or what is this common ground that we can stand on and agree on、uh, a path that we both want to to take, right? That's my initial reaction, and then you know, asking friends for support is、um, is my second thing. So I reached out to Steve first, and then reached out to Jess because she's. Closer to the problem, and then I told you. I think you're the third person I told, and then we had spoken about it. And I I remember speaking to you about you know my mindset at that time. I was explaining to you my general reasoning of like how our conversations was going, and it went something like this. It went like, okay, well, for me,、uh, selfishly to say it is like I don't think. It's wise to bring a person into this world when there are so many things against us. So first,、um, let's look at just Sarah' situation, right? She's supporting her family. You know, she's the main breadwinner. So that means that you know, if she's going to go through this pregnancy, yes, she's going to have maternity leave and all that stuff. But still, there there's going to be、um, a lot more burden on her shoulder, added burden on her shoulder to. You know, have this baby for one, but then raise the kid, and then for me, it's like I'm unemployed. I have been for the last year. Had my year anniversary just a few days ago, and I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do. You know,、uh, for the future, whether it's a full time job or not, we can speak about that a bit later. But you know, I was in an uncertain place in my life. I just got back to Vietnam as well. Of course, that means that you know, there's distance between the mother. And the father and the kid, right? And then there's other things like what about you know、um, the future of the child? Is this the best situation to bring a kid in、uh, to this world?、Um, and、um, what about our parents? You know, how do they view it? You know, Thai culture is not、uh, as o- potentially open as Western culture in terms of pro-choice. So how would that happen? Like you know, what would happen there? What about my parents? Like, 
if I told them maybe they're open enough because they basically spent more time in the UK than anywhere else in the world. But what about my grandparents? Would then I have to like convince her for the kid to live in Vietnam? And so there's just, and then like, of course, education. And there's just so many layers to this decision that I didn't take lightly. Of course, I was scared, but my immediate reaction was like, oh, like, surely you're going to get rid of it, right? Surely you're going to have an abortion. Like, what other reasons are there? But, you know, that's being very selfish and naive. And mm. we heard about um, Ola's experience and that sounded fucking terrible. Like, of course, and I've seen it firsthand as well. Like, you don't want people to go through that. But yeah, you also have to weigh the trade-offs, right? Like, there's there's elements to this decision that are out of your control. And... You know, it's not like getting a puppy for fucking Christmas. Even that's a fucking burden, right? But it's having this kid, putting all your love and energy into it, raising it till, till you know, till you die, basically. It's not even till 18 or 16 or whatever the age is. It's like this whole crazy project. And, you know, we've all seen broken homes. We all know, like, uh, maybe a friend of a friend or even stories about, you know, like single parents, how hard it is and even though it's a good job, they always find father figures or mother figures elsewhere to sort of like fill that hole. There's mm -hmm. just psychological complexities that we just don't understand uh, and maybe we're not prepared to. And all this to say that maybe they're just excuses, right? Maybe the fundamental truth is I'm not ready for this. Um, and I, I also admit that, like there's, there's, there's absolutely no way I wouldn't admit that. But you know, these were the things that were going through my head and I think we discussed it with each other. Yeah. And I think that's why you were so like, I get you. That's exactly, maybe it reminded me also, uh, maybe I reminded you of what you went through too, to some extent, yeah. right? All these layers. Yeah, I think so. I think so because I think, I think it's easy to look at this situation and automatically assume, you know what, Chris is a dick. Because he got a girl pregnant and he doesn't want this baby. And now he's asking her to have an abortion. I think it's very easy to judge this situation just on the surface level and not look beyond it. But I think if someone really truly knows you, if someone truly like understands the core of who you are, it's not that you don't want to have a baby. It's not that you don't want to take responsibility. It's because you know how big a responsibility it is and how well you would want to perform that responsibility how well you would want to fulfill the, that role that that's the reason you are saying i'm not ready for it now because it's the fact that you and i have both had childhoods in which certain things just didn't work out and you want to make sure when i do it i want to make sure i do it right i want to make sure i do it consciously i want to make sure i do it in a mindset that my child deserves i want to make sure that i've already lived my life enough that i a have the experience to be a good father mother and b i don't live my life through my child which is then you know messing up another human being so i think it's it's when you say burden <clears throat> people might hear it and say, oh, so it's not a burden when you fuck somebody, but it's a burden when you get them pregnant. It's not that burden. The burden is the re like the real responsibility and the consequences of bringing someone up and bringing them up right. And I think there's no book in the world. I mean, there's loads of parenting books, but there's no book that really can break down parenting in a way that makes sense. I don't think any humans really know how to be a good parent, but we can only do our best. And I think both of us come from a place where we're, we've been through things and we just know deep in our hearts that there's a fear in us that we could somehow mess somebody else up. So we wanna make sure that we prepare in all ways possible to be a mature, evolved, you know, well-prepared person to, to give, a good life to, to this baby. And I think that's where I was coming from as well, where, when I reacted and kind of like, what do you mean she wants to keep it? Because to me, I was like, she is going to abort, right? And 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 the, the thing is, and it sounds so shitty and it sounds so 
almost evil because you and I had had so many conversations on like, what can we do to to like make sure that you and Sarah see eye to eye and somehow can agree on not bringing this pregnancy to ter- uh, to to uh, to term, right? And and it and I had to like stop. I had to like pause in midst of this conversation be like why am i saying this stuff why am i reacting this way like am i a dude but i think when you peel those layers off and and when you really look beyond it the reason is what i was explaining just now it, it's that fact that we really truly actually do care and we want to make sure that when we do finally have a child it is in a way where we are ready when we are ready and we can really give the child everything we hope to um so yeah, I mean, I was really surprised at my reaction, but I, I get it now in, re- uh, you know, looking back at it. But when we were talking about it, I remember you bringing up um, being a man, right? Like like that concept of like right and wrong and being a man. And so I wanted you to kind of like dive into that a bit deeper. Sure. So as I said in the last episode that this is... The second time I've been through something like this, right? Second time I've got a girl pregnant and I've been in the situation. Now, what do I do, right? You would have thought I learned the first time, but apparently not. Fuck. Anyway. Okay. So first relationship, she tells me she's pregnant. I'm in Spain fucking having a well of a time with my friends. Obviously, um, wasn't having... A good time after that because it was always on your mind no matter how young you were i was like 2021 20, right like but still i was like holy fuck this is what a decision because i think even then i saw it you know I, I think i see it deeply like deeper now there's more layers now but even then i was like okay well you know what i said was like we should just have this baby and we'll just get married you know, naively mm. at, at 21. Even if I saw all the like repercussions and, and, and all, everything else, I still did that, right? There was something, I don't know what it was, right? And then, and then this time around, the same intuition came up. Wait, surely you've just, even if you don't marry this girl, surely you have to support um, her having mm-hmm. this if, if that's what she wanted. And I was like, well, actually, hold on a second. Why the fuck do I have to do that? Like, is it the best decision? Screw being a man or not. Because I think that what we're taught as men is that, you know, if you don't if you don't take responsibility for what you've done, specifically in the situation of supporting the kid, if she wants it, then you're automatically a dick, right? You're like the worst. You're like scum of the earth, right? And in some like you know maybe in some situation that is true but it can't be painted with a broad brush right Mm -hmm. i think it i think it's inherent or what how we're taught as men is like you have to do that like that's like if 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 nothing is true that's the only truth in life you like you have to you know have your seed be you know the proud of like you know the proudest moment of your life and all this stuff right that uh, maybe that's kind of like innate to men in general where it's just like oh yeah it's my seed like i've got to do everything and, and just take on that responsibility but i don't like i was like this is this is not it like i was questioning like does this make me less of a man because i'm saying no you should get rid of it or i don't want to be involved because like you know i've said my piece and if you don't agree with it wh- what else can i do but it but then therefore the scale has tipped right like Actually, I don't have, I don't, there's no 50-50 chance, right? Even if the act was 50-50, the decision is actually not. And I'm not saying I'm, I disagree with it not being 50-50 in terms of if she wants it, you know, she has the right to. I'm just saying that it's still, like, it's, it's a terrible thing. It's a terrible situation, right? Um, that's just the reality of it, right? So how do you deal with it? How do you reconcile the feeling of not being a man when everything you're taught is like you have to you know honor what what she decides and so i struggled with that for a for a while and um to add there was a, a ticking time bomb right pregnancy um 
to get an abortion is 10 to 12 weeks. So she had already, so it was like four or the sixth week, right? So it was like, oh shit, well, we don't have that much time. How do we, how do I, with the help of Ola, help her see what I'm seeing and help her peel those layers back? Because like like I said to my dad the other day, because his friends always ask me, why don't you get married? I'm like, well, it's easy to get married, but it's hard to hard to stay married, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same fucking mm-hmm. concept, man. Like it's, it's, it's fucking easy to have a kid, right? But it's very hard to raise a kid. And that's the problem that we're dealing with. It's not having the kid, it's raising the kid. So, you know, how do we make us see that? And yeah. So, so what did what did being a man really mean so like so and, and it and it stemmed from like some kind of societal um you know expectation or like cultural expectations or like a, and being a man here means uh i must provide or what is the definition yeah here yeah you're 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 right exactly i must provide i must be responsible um for you know all the seed that you spread in the world i must not abandon people if you want to put it that way like yeah all those all those things you see right like all those things you hear yeah. about and and-, and 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 the options we were looking at and okay d- just a disclaimer here and, and kind of like a clarification we weren't trying to convince sarah to get rid of the baby we were trying to convince sarah to have an open-minded conversation about it um <clears throat> Because she at some point, and again, I'm relaying what you told me, so this might be completely biased and Chris might, might have been lying to me, guys, so I don't know. But um, but what I, what I was told was she was, at some point, she wasn't even really responding. So it was kind of like, Chris was just kind of like, what's happening? Like, is she just deciding to just have it? Do I have no say? Uh can I can I say what I want or what I need as well while battling as well with like what does it really mean being a man? So I think there was a moment when when there was real fear in, fear in you that you have no say, and that kind of prompted me to do some research into into what it means, you know, like equality when it comes to pregnancies. It's really interesting because. Um, Someone wrote on a, on a Reddit thread and they use the A, uh, I A N A L, which is I am not a lawyer. That's short, like a short handle for that. Um, and she was explaining essentially contractually, like if you looked at a pregnancy as a contract, um, there are certain rights that are assigned to men and women. And because there's like inequality in what men and women have to do during the pregnancy, then uh, the men's rights end at a certain point and the women's rights begin at a certain point. So it's like, for example, the men's rights are, uh, he can choose whether he wants to use protection or not. He can choose whether he's going to ejaculate inside or not. He can choose, uh, you know, whether he's going to want to be involved or not. But after that, like, he can't choose what the woman's going to be doing with the seed right so the woman's choices are she can choose whether she was going to use protection or not she can choose to use post protective forms like you know a plan b or you know choose to eliminate the pregnancy she can choose whether she wants to give up the child for adoption or not and the same choice goes then the, the father has the right of first dibs if if there would be an adoption yeah it was just a really interesting breakdown of like all these things and um and and my question was particularly in an abortion, how much freedom and how much choice does the father have versus the mother, right? Because normally right now, by law, it's the woman that gets to decide, right? In most countries, when you are able to have an abortion, it's my body, my choice, and and it's it's the woman's choice, and the man kind of doesn't have a choice. But when the baby is born, then in many places, by law, you are required to pay money, Right, you are support, a uh, child support, uh, yeah. So, so it was very interesting for me to kind of like see that breakdown, and I thought that was uh, that was a you know like, I, and I don't know what you think about that kind of contractual breakdown because there was a guy that actually jumped in and he was very against this breakdown because um, he was like, why? What if the guy wants to keep the baby 
but the woman doesn't want to keep the baby. So let's flip the situation. You want to have this baby, but Sarah doesn't want to have a baby. How can you say it's fair on Sarah to risk her life? Because pregnancies are life risking situations, right? It's, there's, there is a small percentage of women with current science that pass away during pregnancy, but that risk is still there. There's a risk of dying when you have childbirth. You know, there's, there's loads of risks involved. So if the man wants a baby and the woman doesn't want a baby, then where does this right lie? Right? So it's, <laughs> it's quite. I don't know the answer to that question, to be honest. I just know the situation I'm in. Like the larger, if 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 we were going to discuss this in terms of like the political policy, I would probably favor the women, right? But when you're in yeah. it, it's fucking different. It's a fucking different story, it, it, you know, because it's like it's actually affecting you, right? And yeah. you're hoping that both parties respect each other's views, respect each other's uh, opinions and and then come to what is um, a common ground and then go from there. Like, I don't think there's a one size fit all argument, but you know, when you talk about policy, it has to be black and white. And then, you know, then, then, then it's up for grabs, right? Other areas up for grabs, but I don't know. I mean, yeah. <sighs> yeah. Uh, fuck. I mean, I wish I was a woman for like a day and gone through this, then I'll tell you, right? Like, but, I just, you know, I'm probably going to be siding with the male, like, however subjective that might be. Mm. I, I don't know. I don't know. And I think that's where we were when we were chatting, um, you know, when we were chatting through all of this, because because we realized right now the kind of like the only person that was, hmm, no, how to say this? You were very adamant about not wanting the baby. And Sarah was very adamant about wanting the baby. Um, and I think you guys were in a bit of a gridlock. And there was no, there was no dialogue. There wasn't, I think at least for me, I felt like you weren't able to express yourself. And I obviously had not spoken to Sarah. So I didn't know if she was able to express herself. So I think at that point um, was when I suggested you talk to my therapist. Um Shout out to Sue, who's bloody amazing. Um, but but yeah, but I, I had emailed her and kind of it was one of those like very surreal emails where you're like, <laughs> I think I wrote like, hi, Sue, hope you're doing well. Looking forward to our session. By the way, I have a friend who got a girl pregnant and it would be great if they could do a group session with you. <laughs> And I was asking basically for permission to introduce you to her um, and whether she would talk to you guys. Because I thought, you know what? It all stemmed from a lack of communication. Let's see if we can get at least to a place where you both feel some sense of um, unity in conversation mm. now that we're already at this point. So it was... So yeah, so I I, uh, I had introduced you to Sue. So let's uh, let's talk about that. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So yeah, like it was a, it was actually probably the best idea because even after the first conversation with Sue, like I felt so much better, right? Just cuz she had different tactics to sort of get things out of you and um just a really good person to kind of guide you through uh, or, or pick different elements out of what you're saying and try to concrete it and then like help you move on um, and ask the right questions. So she was um, definitely a godsend and definitely helped me through this process uh, from the thanks to Ola. And so first I, I was like, I don't know how I'm going to go through this, right? Because one of the main problems with this is that I didn't understand what Sarah was saying to me. Like I, we would go around in circles. I would say like my reasons, you know, being logical, these are my reasons. And, you know, um, you know, it's not an easy decision. And then I asked her and she was like, oh, you know, I just, I, I can't, you know, like I just, and I, I, I never got a real answer or, or, or maybe one that I didn't find satisfying enough. Right. That was probably the main problem. So when Ola introduced me to Sue, I spoke to Sue and I was like, hey, Sue, like, this is the situation I'm going through. 
um, and then she was speaking to me, and she actually she does a lot of things. She's she's very experienced in different areas, but one of the things that she's experienced in is mediating conversations, usually in a business setting, but the framework is pretty much the same, right? So she would walk me through like the framework of like, hey, so what she would do is she'll have a one-on-one with me to understand the context and frame the questions in the right way. Then she'll have a one-on-one with Sarah and do exactly the same. And then come back and do a group conversation and, you know, have the questions that she needs to highlight. Have me say uh, my answer. Have Sarah repeat it to, uh, repeat it to me, see um, if she understood it or not. And, you know, we'll go through that, you know, a long list of questions and then hopefully come to the next steps, basically, right? Or an action plan. What do we decide to get out of this? So do you want me to walk you through actually what happened? Yeah, yeah, I think that will be interesting. Sure. So, yeah, so, you know, I mean, of course, you know, that was a very emotional heavy session like i remember speaking to ola afterwards i was like yeah i had to like drink before it like i haven't felt i haven't felt that nervous in a very very long time and bear in mind like i um you know i like lead workshops so i like stand up there's like 30 people in the room and i'm acting a fool you know like i i I, i'm fairly confident i have been for ever since i've you know done workshops and done public speaking events but this is just speaking to a laptop right so it's like it's like every, any meeting you ever have it's super chill but for some reason right i was nervous i was so fucking nervous it was like the first time i've ever spoken on like a zoom call or some shit it's like i was on stage again or whatever right yeah so i was just yeah a bunch of nerves and you know had a beer i calmed me down and um yeah we just went through things like you know questions if i can remember from the top of my head <sighs> fuck i mean it's it's difficult because i think i was just an emotional wreck but yeah just like talk talk to me about the situation and you know what you want to do right so i told her like you know i don't think it's wise his mm. all my examples or his how how i foresee it even if it's like best case scenario um there's just so many hurdles for how for how this won't be successful um and then um you know we spoke about that and then so went back and forth and and one thing was was quite interesting um sarah was felt very closed to the Mm. situation and and um she also mentioned after like you know at the end of the call that it was probably more for you than for me so maybe Mm. selfishly it was right but what i my objective in that session was really to understand where where she's coming from like what is she thinking and what's the reasons behind that she wants to keep it right and all the way through this process as well i just want to mention which is like we set up these calls but they had to happen you know they had to be spread out so like sarah would get like a checkup and she's already like felt a heartbeat and yeah. um and ha- had a scan so of course that doesn't help um my argument right and uh, my case because of course like it's, something is growing inside of you you're gonna develop an emotional connection i mean that's only human and if you don't then you're a fucking robot right like that's uh, so and you know it was this was pretty late this was like 10 weeks in so we didn't have a lot of time to like make or decide on a conclusion right and um, we were going back and forth, but to be honest, I I I felt I said what I needed to say, and I and I um, and and for the thanks of Sue, and she really helped us kind of guide e- each other. The funny thing is, in that in that meeting, you know, we we spoke about the decision, right? Like I think this is one of the crucial parts, and I'm like, yeah, I don't think we should keep it. And then Sarah was like. I have to keep it, you know, like I'm, uh, 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 you know, it's, it's part of my belief. Like, I don't think I'm religious. Maybe it's a cult. Like, I think it's more culturally 
uh, a thing that you know it, it's just inherently wrong, right? It's against what I believe, and and she's also expressed this with her friends, and they all think the same. So it's a cultural norm that hey, if this happens, it means it's a godsend, and mm-hmm, I, I you know mm-hmm. I have to keep it right, and you know that's respect to that. Yeah, I mean, what, what are you gonna do, right? Like. You, 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 there's not so I didn't even spend that much time on on that part. There was nothing I could say that could um, reverse her decision or overturn it. Uh, and it was just like, okay, well, you know. Um, then we spent more on the, the the last section of the meeting, which was, okay, what's next, and what is Chris going to do about the situation, and what is Sarah going to do about the situation. The thing that that made me think. Um, uh, right away, you know, when, when you guys were having these therapy sessions and you and I were having a lot of back and forth about it, um, and, and the questions were, you know, so what would come next? What would come next for you? What would come next for her? This potential pregnancy, this not potential pregnant, potential baby, um, existing pregnancy. One of the things that really kind of shook me was that you told me she was going to quit her job. And from what I had heard from you, she was the sole provider for her family. So she was, um, she takes care of her father, mother, sibling, right? Brother. And I was like, I don't understand. And, and I think this is also one of the reasons I'm doing this. And, and I really, 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 really hope that, that Sarah is going to want to come on this show and talk because, because right now we're doing it all one sided. I know it kills you. You're scared. But obviously, I would just do it with her. You don't have to be there. But it's just, I, I do think it's important to have two sides of the dialogue, right? Because to me, I'm completely dumbfound when I hear, what do you mean you're going to quit your job? So now there's already three dependents that you've got. Uh, add you, that's four people you have to afford. And add baby, which is like the most expensive thing ever. Now you've got five people you have to afford. What does this really mean? And what's your plan? Like what? And and of course, there's also a part of me that's like, you know, the sister from another mister that I'm like, what about Chris? Like, well, like, does Chris have to now afford the livelihood of five people? Like, what, you know, like automatically I'm just like, what? what's the math here? Like, explain to me logically what are the steps that, that happened right so that was that was my biggest thing like at that point right that i was like okay if this goes through then what are the repercussions yeah exactly and i mean so it's probably half my fault right like cuz i'm always an advocate for doing what you like and finding sort of um a meaning right finding something that mm. you're really passionate about and you should just go for it if you're if you're stuck in a 9 to 5 or uh, potentially dead end job there's something else you can do if you're going to spend any time and energy and you know your livelihood you should find something you want to do and we had spoken briefly about this uh during our two weeks which is like she has been in the industry for 10 plus years but you know you know in a great position uh you know running her own department super nice like hotel um so you know well done, great job, right? Really grinded it out. But she had also said that actually she really wants to do something else, something maybe in marketing or media, just something like Mm -hmm. a bit more creative, a bit more to what, like closer to her personality. So she's still finding something, right? Her job was her job, but it wasn't her calling. And so, you know, I'm a guy that would be like, what the fuck, man? Like if you've got savings, um, you should just do it um, because you can always go back to your job. What's... What's the fucking difference, right? But this is completely different. This is fucking completely different. Now you have to worry about every little thing, right? It's not it's not only you now. It's not only you now. It's it's um well it wasn't even only her before because of her family and stuff. So it's like it's even crazier. And yes, she had it in her resignation, and when we had the last call she was unemployed. It sound right, boy. 